who excluded the Messiah. They didn't want to accept the Messiah as their way back to the Father. They were still stuck in that first covenant. And Sean, the Gentiles coming in, looked down upon those castaways. They were a no people. Remember, they were called another nation, man. They weren't even looked at as Israelites. Because they were raised not even knowing that they weren't they were taught that they were Greeks and Romans and all of these various different customs and, and, and things. So the high and mighty scribes and Pharisees, when they saw these these castaways waking up, they were like, No. No, hell no. These niggas ain't coming back in. They're filthy. They being faggots. They working out naked. They doing this, they doing that, they eat this, they bow to these idols. Hell no, they're not coming back in. And that's the same thing we were doing. Okay, we were, we were bowing to these idols, eating all these unclean foods, doing all these unclean practices. All right, but through mercy, all right, through the, through the Heavenly Father giving us that grace period and entering the Holy Spirit inside of us, we've turned away from those things, man. Those are the Gentiles. That's the no people, which are now a people, man. And we're going to go deeper into it, Lord will, this week. All right, so... His justification on saying this is not talking about Israelites, literally. And my thing is, if this is your true doctrine, why are you mad that we're calling ourselves Israelites? I thought that the new covenant was given to all people and now they're Israel. You see how hypocritical Esau is, man? Recall, this is the same epistle where the apostle says... Yet, if any man suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on his behalf. Because they were suffering persecution, all right, not only by the Romans, but by their own country and by their own people, man. Y'all opened up the covenant to the heathen. You know, they were trying to kill him, man. So they were suffering, man. He said, 1 Peter 4 and 16 combined with 2 and 9 alone tells you this nation of Christians, a universal people, whereas national Israel was promised curses and destruction. So what he's saying is this. This is his exact mind frame. We'll show you his exact mind frame. Let's get the book of Jeremiah 33. The book of Jeremiah 33, and I'll take it off of this. <clears throat> Jeremiah 33 <laughs> and 24. Considerest thou not what this people have spoken, saying, The two families which the Lord have chosen, he hath even cast them off? Thus they have despised my people, that they should be no more a nation before them. Thus saith the Lord, If my covenant be not with day and night, and I have not appointed the ordinance of the heaven and the earth, then will I cast away the seed of Jacob and David, my servant, and I will not take any of his seed to be rulers over the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for I will cause their captivity to return and have mercy on them. Because remember, we had no mercy. And that's what Peter was referring to, the book of Hosea. We are not, we were not a people, but now are we the people of the Lord, starting with the Gentiles being uh, uh, awakened, man, through the spirit. Contrary to that first covenant, now through grace we're being ushered into an upgraded covenant where those laws will be written in our inward parts. But you're still that physical seed. And how do we know it? Through faith. But ironically, there's a group of people saying this, and he, don't, he, don't, he, he turns a blind eye to that. You see how hypocritical these people are? And even in the New Testament... It talks about the seed of Israel, man. Being the 12,000 out of each tribe and then a seed, all right, a gathered, okay, uh, uh, from all of the different nations where is because what? Israel would be scattered, man. The scattered Israelites, man. The lost sheep. <laughs> so what they're trying to do is, is tell you that this tribe of Judah, 12,000. The tribe of Asher, 12,000. All of these, this is speaking of heathen from any tribe. When the book of Daniel, when the book of Daniel, the second 
second chapter tells you what? In verse 44, in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. Okay. Daniel 7 and 27 in the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominion shall obey and serve him. So my thing is, so all, um, uh, 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 a government of all different nationalities and nations are going to rule over these different nations. I don't understand. Because you cannot take away prophecy. And this is what they uh, ultimately have thrived themselves in doing over these past years. They've thrived themselves and ultimately being able to start in the New Testament and not really focus on prophecy, but the true prophets are here, right? And what are the true, the true prophets going to do? We, we are going to focus on prophecy because all things that are written in the law and the prophets must be fulfilled. Some have been fulfilled, but there are more that will be fulfilled, man. <laughs> and that promise of that direct seed getting the land back cannot be overlooked and say that now all of these different nations of people okay who who, who believe in Jesus now they're going to rule out of Jerusalem now the land is to them no 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 that doesn't make sense man because revelation 2 and, five, and 26 says, And to he that overcometh and keepeth my works to the end, to him will I give power over the nations. So how are you going to have power over the nations? What nation is going to have power over these nations? These are the things that prophecy address. But you don't want to go into prophecy. You're trying to establish your own madness, which is why you're looking like a damn fool. Losing your mind. Okay, trying to put the curse upon the nation of Israel only and not deal with the blessing. You see that? He's saying basically national Israel was promised curses and destruction by the Messiah. So he's saying that actual seed, the Lord has cast them off. And Paul tells you himself, God has not cast away his people, man. You see? So. Israel was promised curses. What about the blessings? By the Messiah, as in Mark 11 and 12, the fig tree and the vineyard, there is no way around it. You need to abide in Christ or be cut off, John 15. So why are some of you clinging to the patriarchs instead of their Lord? So, so, so the, the, he, they're cutting off Isaac and Jacob. They cling to Abraham. They're cutting off Isaac and Jacob and saying, why are you clinging to the patriarchs and not uh, uh, Jesus? So this is their argument. And it's good. This is a good. This is great. This is good. This gives us something to go into and to edify, man. And to also show that you, you all are hypocrites because. Here's a question I asked this guy. Uh, on that post, you know. Well, um, on his uh, debate uh, 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 post, it says, Hello, vo vocab. Replacement theology is an anti-Semitic doctrine, which I went to a Jewish website and proved it. All right? And we can continue proving it. But I'll show you how it's a, uh, 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 that his replacement theology or covenant, uh, uh, um, covenant fulfillment is, is uh, against what the so-called Jew believes. We're going to show you, man. All right? I said, hello, vocab. Replacement theology is an anti-Semitic doctrine. Will you get a Jewish rabbi on here and debate that topic? That would be awesome to watch. It's getting old seeing the same old debates with Hebrew Israelites. That's what I said, right? Now, here's his response. And I don't too much go back and forth with this guy because I already know. And people like this kind of irk me, you know, so some people you, you deal with, you got to know how and when, you know, so it says, um, remnant save, sorry, 
maybe this isn't the channel for you then. I specialize in Hebrew Israelism and don't plan on changing that anytime soon. So anybody else who takes hold to the saying that they're the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he don't give a damn about them. You niggas just ain't Israelites. <laughs> That's basically what he said. No, I ain't worried about them. You see? And covenant fulfillment theology isn't anti-Semitic. Okay? Most Christians of... Watch how he just uh, goes around it. Most Christians of all branches have believed it through the ages until dispensational. They always use these big words. Dispensationalism. All right? Came around in the 19th century. Shut up. Okay? I'm talking about the people who are saying that they return to that land because of the promise given to the, the their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But look how he just turned it into something else. Now, I responded, aren't the Jewish people claiming to be Hebrew Israelites or Jews who are Israelites? They came from Jacob, Judah, all right, or Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, who are physical descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and have returned to the land by promise, starting with the first Aaliyah, which you can look up the first Aaliyah, the second Aaliyah, third Aaliyah. Because for years, for about 60 years, or for a while, they had been uh, uh, returning to that land, taking it, slowly but surely, taking it by force from the Palestinians, right? Starting with the first Aaliyah and fulfilled in 1948. So aren't, my, my question is, aren't these people Claiming that they are physical descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and have returned to that land by promise. They literally took that land by force and removed millions of Palestinians by force. And replacement theology is 100% against that, right? Now, wouldn't replacement theology rebuke those acts? <laughs> this is very hypocritical of you. To single out one group, but ignore this. And we know this is what he's going to do, but, you know, you just, you, you have fun with it a little bit because that's true. He is saying that anyone claiming to be the actual seed and have rights to that land by promise to the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is a lie. You see, he's teaching that all nations are now heirs to the promise of that. Please just look around. You are in a hospital. 